Most of us if not all, have seen lots of animals, plants, and fungi in our backyard or when we visited our relatives in the province, few might have observed microscopic organisms such as bacteria and protists under the microscope. These events make us wonder how varied these organisms in terms of their appearance, habitat and even their ecological niche, these lead us to the questions, how does each organism differ from one another? How are these organisms group? What is the basis in such groupings? For this lesson, we will be studying the concept of species and how the levels of biodiversity is used as basis in classifying organisms. The term biodiversity came from the words bio which means life and diversity which means variety. It refers to the existence of different species of plants and animals in particular within a specific environment. Let us try to look at some facts regarding to the Philippine biodiversity. The Philippine biodiversity is considered as one of the mega diverse countries in the entire world, because that it is a home for many endemic species. The term endemic means that these are the species that can be only found within a specific location in the Philippines. Philippines also ranks fifth in terms of the total number of plants and animal species. Philippines is also considered as a biodiversity hotspot, because it is a home for the study of different species. What are the different levels of biodiversity? As you can see in the illustration, it is represented by a pyramid in which it shows the hierarchical levels of biodiversity. The levels of biodiversity are, genetic biodiversity, species biodiversity, and ecosystem biodiversity. Genetic diversity is the total number of genetic characteristics in the genetic makeup of a species. It ranges widely from the number of species to differences within species and can be attributed to the span of survival for a species. Species diversity consists of the large number in all different kinds, shapes, colors and sizes of organisms that inhabit the earth. It includes the smallest and the simplest bacterium to the complex, bigger, brightly colored flower or fish. Add to this, the carabao, the tallest acacia, the biggest elephant and a human like you. These organisms are found in various places from the soil, to the rivers, oceans, forests, salty or hot places, in short in every corner of the earth. Some of them even live in your body. Ecosystem diversity deals with the variations in ecosystems within a geographical location and its overall impact on human existence and the environment. This taxonomic concept places each organism in a series of hierarchically arranged categories. Taxonomy, is a branch of biology that deals with identifying naming and classifying of living organisms. This taxonomic concept places each organism in a series of hierarchically arranged categories. Taxonomy, is a branch of biology that deals with identifying naming and classifying of living organisms. Taxonomy is important for an easy reference identification of diverse living organisms. To show relationships and to possibly trace the origin of organisms well. It helps us categorize organisms so we can more easily communicate biological information. Taxonomy uses hierarchical classification as a way to help scientists understand and organize the diversity of life on our planet. Hierarchical classification basically means that we classify groups within larger groups. But who started the study of taxonomy? Swedish naturalist and explorer Carolus Linnaeus was the first to frame principles for defining natural genera and species of organisms. He created a uniform system for naming them known as binomial system of nomenclature. He is a botanist who established a simple system for classifying and naming of organisms and he is also known as the father of modern taxonomy. He also developed a ranking system of classification. He developed a classification system called the taxonomic hierarchy which are domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Domain, refers to the largest of all groups in the classification of life. There are currently three agreed groups at this level, the archaea domain, bacteria domain, and eukarya domain. Each domain contains a collection of organisms with similar properties and evolutionary histories, as scientists have organized them. In biology, kingdom is a taxonomic rank that is composed of smaller groups called phyla or divisions. In plant organisms are placed into these categories based on similarities or common characteristics. Some of the characteristics that are used to determine placement are cell type, nutrient acquisition, and reproduction. The two main cell types are prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Common types of nutrient acquisition include photosynthesis, absorption, and ingestion. Types of reproduction include asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Phylum is a taxonomic ranking that comes third in the hierarchy of classification, after domain and kingdom. Organisms in a phylum share a set of characteristics that distinguishes them from organisms in another phylum. The qualities that group animals into a phylum have changed throughout scientific history, as better methods have arisen to determine how groups of animals are related. Class is a taxonomic group comprised of organisms that share a common attribute. 
it is further divided into one or more orders. In biological classification of organisms, a class is a major taxonomic rank below the phylum, or division, and above the order. Order a taxonomic rank used in classifying organisms generally below the class and comprised of families sharing a set of similar nature of character. For instance, class mammalia includes order cryptora or bats, order primate or primates, and order carnivora or meat-eating mammals. Family, a taxonomic group of one or more genera, especially sharing a common attribute. Organisms belonging to the same family would have evolved from the same ancestors and share relatively common characteristics. Biological genus is defined as a taxonomic rank comprised of species with common attributes. It includes groups of species that are structurally similar or phylogenetically related. The term genus was borrowed from Latin. It means birth, descent, origin, sort, or type. The plural form is genera. Thus, the meaning of genera pertains to more than one genus as most taxonomic families are comprised of several genera. Species is the most basic unit or category in the biological classification of organisms. It tells us that a species is an individual capable of mating with another of the same kind to produce fertile offspring. In order to give a proper scientific name of an organism, we follow the binomial system of nomenclature. Binomial system of nomenclature, is a normal system of naming species of living things. We combine the genus and the species, for example, Homo is the genus, while Sapiens is the species. Once we combine the genus and the species, we have Homo sapiens, it is the scientific name for humans. What are the rules in naming scientific name? The first word of scientific name is the genus to which the organism belongs. The second word of scientific name is the species identifier. Species, is usually a Latin description of some important characteristic of an organism. Just like human, we belong to species sapiens. Sapiens means a living organism that has the highest intelligence among the other living organisms. When we use the Latin for an organism, we always capitalize the genus but not the species identifier. We also print the name in italics or underline them. Yes, if we don't organize things by categorizing them into different groups, the world will be very confusing. We have named nearly 2 million different species living today and it is estimated that the actual number of different species ranges from 10 million to 100 million. They range from tiny bacteria that can only be seen with the help of a microscope to whales weighing several tons. In a tropical rainforest of just a few square meters, there may be hundreds of different plants, or thousands of insects and creatures. Living today is only a small part of the number of organisms who lived in the past. Some scientists estimate that 99% of all species of plants and animals that ever existed are extinct. In this complex world, humans are just one species. Only we try to understand and learn about other creatures that share our planetary home. But this is also because we want to better understand our position in the web of life. We want to know how we adapt.